Well, now let's take a look at this. If you're 18 years old up to 29 years, what exactly are you supposed to do as far as the financial world is concerned? We call it socioeconomic concerns. What exactly are you supposed to do? Today with me here on this board, I've actually have six points that you're supposed to adhere to. And guess what? By the time you hit that five, for God's sake, and you're going to remember this video. You're going to be so thankful. By the way, have you ever met somebody who is at their 40s or 50s and they're like, if someone can actually dare take me back when I was at my 20s, I would do this and that. So how about you consider yourself being lucky that you're getting this message before you actually hit that age of regret that is 50 years and above and what have you. All right. So anyway, guess what? And I know you 18 to 29 years old, you're kind energetic and I love the fact now. Go ahead and do what we call the liking of this video and make sure that you subscribe and make sure I go ahead and comment on the comment section. So let's get into the business because I don't want to waste much of your time. Okay. Now, here we are. See, what exactly are you supposed to do? The very first thing that you're supposed to do that I see most of the people doing is what we call playing the safe game too early. What do I mean by this? I was approached by a guy who told me, you know what, Joseph, I was a bit lucky if I can consider myself so. I'm only 23 years old. I'm about to hit 24. And guess what? I have 1.5 million. I got a good job that is paying me good. I asked how much is good and said, hey, I'm actually earning around 150,000 per month. And I was like, wow, that's a good money. I mean, if you're in Kenya and you're earning around $1,500 a month, that's quite of a good money. All right. So the guy was like, okay, fine. I have this 1.5 million with me that I've saved and I'm I'm looking forward into buying a piece of property maybe a you know piece of land and what have you and i was like hmm okay there is nothing wrong with buy piece of land i 100 percent support buying piece of land i 100 percent owning properties and what have you but the question is this I, I told the guy let's 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 think loud okay uh see there is an issue called playing safe to while you playing safe to while. you know there's a difference between storing money and growing money i always throw those jabs to you guys what are we supposed to focus on when you're 21 all the way to 46 or 45 years old you're supposed to focus on growing your cash so when you actually try to play the safe game too early what happens now you store your money rather than putting your money to a place whereby you see somebody who is at 20s you really need to be liquid 20s 30s even early 40s you really need to be liquid you need to be actually investing that money where it's generating something and I said, okay, fine, let's go ahead and buy that piece of land as you've suggested. What do we get in return? Nothing. Why? Because you don't have the capacity to value at the property. So playing the game, what we call the playing safe too early, simply means you get those properties or you get those investments that are not generating anything. You know, you're playing what we call the, you know, reservation game whereby, you know, you don't want to lose your money of which I totally support. But at the same time, yeah, you don't want to lose your money. But at the same time, you want to grow your money and Put it out there so that at least you can generate some income okay so by the way that point can actually go with the point number two which is avoid 50 year old investment pickups for example take these two brains somebody who is aged at 25 years old and someone who is aged twice of that which is 50 years old and then this guy you subject them to like four million let's say they have their four millions with them so the 50 guy the 50 year old guy and the 25 years both of them they have the four million those two guys will approach life differently the guy at 50 probably will think about hey you know what probably if i don't have a home i'm gonna go ahead and acquire a home because I have families, probably my kids are actually growing older now. You know, I'm about to be called a grandfather and what have you. So the guy is safeguarding what he has. He don't want to lose that money. And obviously, there's no age that I'm saying you're supposed to lose your money. So the guy will think about getting maybe a piece of land somewhere, coming up with a structure to own a home, blah, 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 and such kind of a thing. Basically, that's what we were told when we were growing up. Look up, look upon when you, you know, look upon uh, to access or to acquire, you know, or to own a home and what have you. That is playing safe. That is more of safeguarding your money than and investing it and then the guy at 25 probably will be like hmm you know let's say let's say for example you're a video videographer you're a producer that guy will think about hey i can buy myself a good camera i can record i can I mean i can buy some sell myself some for example if such kind of kind of kind of money i will think about getting some things about the production and what have you you invest that was giving you why because you have the time that's what you're supposed to do and i'm not saying that you're supposed to risk your money i'm saying playing the the, the what we call the safe game too early when you play that game uh what, what do you call the the, the, the the you know what do you call too early playing that game of playing safe too early that's where the problem comes in what you're supposed to do is that have a combination of two things yes you're trying to safeguard the money obviously because you don't want to lose that cash and at the same time you're trying to look at it from the point of hmm yes i want to invest this money uh but at the same time 
I rather want to safeguard this money, but at the same time, I really need to grow this money. So at this particular age, because we say from 20 to 25, or rather from 20 to 30, focus on doing a lot of things. Gather experience, gather knowledge, invest, do a lot of things at the same time, so that at least you can be able to acquire more knowledge as you move along the way. So avoid those first two points. Number one, avoid playing safe too early. Number two, avoid picking the 50-year-old investment option and what have you. The only way you can get yourself into these investments are like the real estate and what have you is when you really have a good cash flow. When you have a lot of good cash flow, then you can be like, hmm, okay, fine. I'm earning good. I'm earning a lot of money. So I can focus getting to directly into the real estate. There is no problem with that. But getting into it probably in a situation whereby you're getting some properties and what have you. Number one, yeah, I know there's something called lad banking. I don't know why, guys, you might think like, Joseph, are you always against the lands and what have you? I'm never against them. I love them. They are quite amazing. But I actually feel bad when I see somebody going to acquire a property. You don't have the capacity to value the property. You've buyed yourself that piece of land, I don't know, 300 kilometers from where you live. Nothing is going on there. You just want to have that pride of, hey, you know what? I own a property. I own a land. I do that. But it does not help you in one way or the other. You really need cash flow. Okay? By the way, there are two phases of life that you really need cash flow. When you're growing up in terms of the finances and actually when you're facing out from the world of investments or the world of uh, jobs and employment and what have you. Those two times you really need money. Okay? We go to the point number three. There's something called your void social debt. Remember one thing from 18 to 29 years old, let's say from 18 to 24, this quad we call the phase of self-identification. And that particular point, they told you you're a boy, you're a man, you're whatever. I just want to see how man you are, how old you are and what have you. And obviously that comes with consequences. Remember in anything and everything that you do, it has its own repercussions. So when you say, when I say avoid uh, what we call the social debt, I simply mean avoid that fee that you pay to prove to people to a point that hey guess what i'm wearing this um i don't want to mention companies i'm wearing this nice shoe i'm wearing this nice shirt whatever the thing i'm wearing in the name of proving a point to some people because that comes actually with what we call the the the, the, the fitting expenses and if you can avoid those fitting expenses it can get yourself into lots of good health and let me tell you one secret if you can go read a book called the psychology of money by morgan Housen, it says that if you can, act, and I love that guy, if you can actually conquer the, you know, um, this urge of living a life to prove something to people that indeed you're doing good in life, I'm telling you that is the genesis of actually conquering a lot of problems as far as the finances are concerned. Don't work with this spotlight effect. It's like you're having somebody watching you like all over the time and what have you. Try to avoid that as much as you can. So when you're at your 18 to 29, remember one thing, this is the most prime age of your life. This is when you can even decide to go the entire day without even taking a lunch. This is the time the language of living below your means can actually be so good. This is the time that you can actually go ahead and sacrifice. Be actually, you have a lot of energy. You can Combine your skills, your professionalism, your, your energy, your time. And like at this particular age, you have like a particular things to trade. A time will come when you don't have the energy. You know, your time will come when you don't have the time. You don't have all those kind of things. You may have the skills, but you don't have the time. You get what I'm saying? So it is good to make sure that at least 18 to 29, you actually focus on avoiding the social debt. That chunk of cash that you're buying to prove a point to people, you can actually utilize that cash and pump it into an investment. You'd rather live as if you live under the rock. When people talk about whatever is trending, I don't know, GT, whatever, whatever the things that is trending out there, you can actually bury yourself under the sand, assume like nothing is happening, invest as much as you can, then you pop out because i'm a fully supporter of it is good to have that balance of when you're investing and when you're enjoying life i don't want to bury then yourself into this investment to a point whereby you're even denying yourself the life things so when you've in, once you've invested you've actually laid all the strategies and all the systems the cash is coming in now for that particular point you can even buy whatever you want you can go for those vacations you can buy any and every brand that you need out there but at least don't be a slave of something don't buy those things to associate yourself with them okay Try to invest and associate yourself with the investments, okay? And it's quite funny that we say the most uh, poor people tend to associate themselves with brands and some things that are not really investments, but the rich people say, hey, that flat is mine, that investment is mine, and all those kind of things, okay? Let's go to the point number four, or rather number five, four, rather. See, uh, start socioeconomic investment early. What does that mean? See, there are two things, socioeconomic early. Social, what does it mean? Um, try to invest on who you know, 
who knows who you know and that kind of things who knows you sometimes it's not about who you know sometimes it's about who knows you for example you can know somebody who doesn't know you so you cannot even benefit out of that so it is good to make sure that at least you know people who knows you and people you get what i'm saying and circle yourself with people of character people who are called them the strategic people who people you know can be able to solve one or two problems people who speak the language of investment people who speak the language of integrity people who speak the language of self-growth self-improvement people who speak the language of growing yourself be it either spiritually financially socially relationship wise and all those kind of things associate with yourself with people who are actually are helping you to propagate yourself to the next level do you know what they say if you can actually count five idiots among us to your circle, you are wrong. There were actually six. You didn't count yourself. Birds of a feather flock together. Always identify whom you associate with. By the way, it's quite, it's quite funny. You know, it's quite funny because if you can associate with people who are winning, I don't know whether this is kind of contagious or whatever the thing it happens, but the thing is it has it usually has that kind of a, a character or a behavior whereby you can even catch cold of success and you can as well transform yourself and propagate yourself to the next level. Economic wise, when I say associate yourself with economic wise, this is when you actually invest as early as you can. When we talk about stocks, when you talk about shares, start as early as you can. Because if you if you I know sometimes early age or when you're young doesn't come with a lot of money but you have a lot of time so if you do not have a huge chunk of cash then you can leverage on the huge chunk of time that you have you can invest as can you imagine this if by the time for example i'm making this video of uh, june of 2024 you know uh you can imagine this in three months time uh, guys will be joining university and you can imagine this can you uh, if guys were to embark on investment assuming maybe you pick like an mma for a money market fund or or, or stocks or, a, or whatever the thing you pick it in terms of investment and then you push that thing along the way the entire stretch of university that's four years assuming you're joining university at around say 19 years or maybe 20 see and then you join university for the next four years by 24 you have yourself already an investment you already know what to invest and you not only win with money but you win with a character and on top of that you add something called um another fall or three or five years before maybe you get a family or something another stretch of actually investment okay by the time now you're getting yourself a family you have yourself investment you already know the language of investment now you're associating with yourself with somebody who already is winning and that way you can push yourself to higher heights so socioeconomic start them as early as you can number five start low and leverage on time that one i've already explained if you don't have the cash, you leverage on time. And the last one, shake off the comfort. See, if there is an enemy of progress, is the comfort. Comfort is basically you doing that what you love most. You know, you don't want to disturb you. And you know one thing, the moment you try to stretch yourself a little bit higher, that's the time you realize, you know, that the body is actually resisting that. It's telling you, no, I cannot go beyond this. You know, I don't love this. You know, all those, they respond by muscle aches and what have you, maybe sleepless nights. And So what you do is that kick off the comfort. Comfort comes with what we call average. And average life comes with you being on the side of the complaining as far as the country is con concerned, irrespective of whichever the country that you come from. So at all the time, make sure that you try as much as you can to make sure that you do not advocate comfort. You know what? Achieving greatness does not come with comfort. Always push yourself above the average. And I told you the simplest way to make sure that you win a lot is simply looking what the majority are doing and do the opposite. I repeat, simply looking what the majority are doing and do the opposite. All right? So anyway, that's the point. That's the end of my video, but never forget this. If you'd like, I did post that, to, so that so that at least you can get a point what I'm talking about. So if you'd like to get my services as far as the investments, businesses, finances is concerned, you can always shoot me a call or a text. Number is always on the description of this specific video. For now, so goodbye and see you in the next one.